Alright, so I am in the middle of doing injectors on this LB7 Duramax. And it's a great idea why you're doing injectors on these. Why you have the valve covers open, the injectors out, you need to set your valve backlash. Especially on older motors. Um, this motor is a little different. I don't have that many miles on it. As you can see, um, it's, you know, it's not the same motor that came in there from the factory. Um, but anyways... I'm going to walk you through setting the valve backlash. There's a couple other videos on YouTube. I'm going to try to explain it a little better. I'm not sure if it will be better or not, but I mean, leave a comment and let me know if you have any questions about it. But anyways, to start off, you want to put cylinder one, which is this first one on the passenger side all the way forward. You want that top dead center on the compression stroke. When that is top dead center on the compression stroke, you can then set cylinder one intake exhaust, cylinder three intake, cylinder five intake, cylinder seven exhaust, cylinder two exhaust, cylinder six intake, and cylinder eight exhaust. And keep in mind, you're gonna to wanna to set your backlash to 12 thousandths which is going to be right down here you're going to want to stick your feeler gauge in between your rocker arm and that little bridge it'll be you're going to want it pretty tight with your 12 thousandths feeler gauge but you're not going to want to be able to put your 13 thousandths feeler gauge in there um and then once you get that I mean, well, another way, you know, kind of, there's a couple different ways that you can find top dead center on everything. I kind of cheated a little bit. I have a little scope camera here that I was just looking down in the cylinder. You can, there's certain ways you can watch your valve train and then you can figure out as, you know, how everything cycles. And you can even, you know, look down into your injector holes and see your piston come up but so like I said once you get that your top dead center if you do have to make an adjustment there is um, let me try to make sure you can see it here I believe it's a 13 millimeter nut and then a flathead screwdriver slot so you can loosen your nut then you just tighten that up or loosen it whichever way you need to go and then you can get right into adjusting, you know, if you have to add pressure, take it away. Alright, so I am on the driver's side right now. I have cylinder four at top dead center on the compression stroke. Um, if you look at my little drawing, it's a little chaotic, but I'll try to make some sense out of this for you. The, this is the layout of the motor, basically the way, you know, you're looking at it here. You know, cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And when cylinder 1 is at top dead center, you can set cylinder 1 intake exhaust, cylinder 3 intake, cylinder 5 intake, and cylinder 7 exhaust along with cylinder 2 exhaust, cylinder 6 intake, and cylinder 8 exhaust. And then as you put cylinder 4 at top dead center, these are the next ones you can do. So cylinder 4, then it's 3 exhaust, 5 exhaust, 7 intake, and you get the picture there. Which, I guess, this is what you're going to want to look at and you can pause the video on that i will try to find another graph online that maybe is a better representation of this i just kind of jotted this down quick before i did everything but um if you didn't already see how you do this you know you have your feeler gauge here 12 thousandths is what you want you know it fits right in here and you want just a little bit of friction but you don't want it to fall out and you don't want the 13,000s to fit in there. 
So, I mean, it kind of holds itself in there with just enough friction there, but I can pull it right out. So that's exactly what I want. Um, like I said, everything else is right on 12 thousandths. Um, you know, if, if you get too small of a gap there, you're going to have issues where your valves aren't closing. If you get too big of a gap, then you're going to hear knock. So that's, you know, a lot of these older motors where, you know, you get a bigger gap over time. You know, whenever you do this, you, whenever you set your valve backlash, these motors are going to sound a lot better and they're going to be quieter. And, you know, you might be able to pick up some power over, you know, probably not much but if you get your clearances set too tight you're really going to lose power because your valves won't be closing the whole way all right so finishing up here um valve backlash everything looks good on this truck like i said this motor only has 4,000 miles on it so i figured it wasn't going to need a whole lot of you know adjustment everything is pretty much right on but i want to make a video just to show you guys how to set it if you need to if you are doing injectors on an LB7, it's well worth the one, or any Duramax in that part. You know, if you have a, if you have the valve covers off a diesel or a Duramax at that point, it's worth checking your valve backlash. Um, just make sure you're at 12 thousandths. Um, uh, if you go too high or too low, that can really make your motor run drastically different. So take your time, double check things, triple check it. Um, Another thing to remember, like I showed you in the chart there, you know, I use cylinder one and cylinder four. You want to use the compression stroke and top dead center. Um, on, like I said, cylinder one, you can do half of them. Then cylinder four, you can do the other half. So hopefully here in a couple days, I'll have a video up doing the injectors on this truck. And that can help anybody else who's doing the injectors. So... If you like this video, if it's helpful, comment, let me know. If you have any questions, if you're trying to do it yourself, let me know. I'll try to help. So, thanks for watching.